put your hand together for Jesus. Yes, I'm happy to be here this morning, being the very first Sunday of the year 2024. Now they will tell me I am here. Hallelujah. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be here. I know the blessing of the year will follow me. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Let's go straight to the business of the day. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your grace also. On behalf of these ones that are standing before you. Thank you, Father. Give us your word. And give us a listening ear. As the word will enter into us, O oh God, help us to grow the word and take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hands together as you take your seat. All oh, the glory must be to our God. For he alone is worthy of my prayer. Yes, no man should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. You know, this month was declared our month of uh, prayer. And by the grace of God, we are dealing on the issues of prayer. There is no Christian without a prayer life. No genuine Christian without what? A prayer life. If you are a Christian, you are bound to pray. And your prayer must be in line with the word of God. You don't just pray a verbal prayer and expect the result. No. Prayer is asking God to take intervention according to his word in any of your situation. Intervene in any circumstances based on his word. That make it work like Wi-Fi. Continue to work. Because you call his name. You reminded him of his word. And you pray with it. There's nothing that will make a result not to come. And I put down here prayer is a dialogue. Praise God. Hallelujah. Prayer is what? A dialogue. The book of First Thessalonians chapter 5. And I will read from verse 16. It says, Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In verse 18, the Bible says, In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Our joy, prayer, and thanksgiving should not be fluctuated with what we call our circumstances. No. Will not. Either by your feeling. The only good thing is obeying this Three command. Obey these three command. You must pray joyfully, continually, giving thanks to the Lord. You will always pray. That make it effective. You cannot be praying with your heart divided. Your mind is a, a, in what you call that place, New Jersey. But you are here praying. You are thinking negative. And you are here praying. 
blaming God for not answering your prayer. A Christian should suppose to have a praying attitude. Not necessarily that we will always kneel down from morning till night or kneel down a whole year, but we must have what we call praying attitude. Anywhere we find ourselves, we have a praying attitude. What do we call this prayer? A dialogue. Prayer should supposed to be a dialogue. Hallelujah. Between who? Man and God. Between man and God. You are praying. You are not forcing God. You are only telling him. Do you know when you are relating with your child, there is nothing that child needs that you will not know. If you are relating with your child. Even if you don't have, you'll be feeling it. Where will I get? But would God lack anything? God will not lack anything. Take note of it. God will never lack anything. So there is no how you talk to your child or your child will come to you. Daddy this, daddy that, daddy this. And you rapport together. The moment the open mouth will tell you, ah, daddy, I need this thing. You will go extra mile to see that you gave it to him. Or you persuade him waiting for when you will have it to give him. How much more God? Prayer is talking to God. When you talk to God, you listen. Praise God. You talk to God. God is ready to talk to you back. But will you hear when you'll be talking to you back? That is where prayer is so important in, in every Christian life. Every Christian life. You will talk to God. You will now wait again and hear what the Lord will say. So prayer is dialoguing. When you talk to God, you wait and listen while you'll be talking. Because definitely, if you are talking right, he must surely give you answer. He must surely talk back to you. Maybe now, maybe later, but he must talk back to you. Praise God. Daddy, are you not hearing me again? Daddy, will you not answer me? Daddy, hear. Daddy is not deaf. He's not deaf. And his hand is not sure that he cannot reach you. So each time you talk to your father, like the days of Abraham, we know the story. Like the days of Abraham, God talking to Abraham. Abraham responded. And Abraham talked to God. God did what? Responded. And we say we are Christians, but we are not doing what is right before God. That's why our story sometimes looks so difficult to, 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 to attend to. Many of us mock God with our word. I don't know whether God will even do it. Sir. I don't know. I don't know whether my God will do it. That means you are not positive. You are speaking negative. You are condemning your word before God. God called Abraham in the book of Genesis. Can we look at that place? If you are a covenant partner, you must know that each time you talk to God, God is ready to do what? Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. If you are a covenant partner, the Lord is there waiting to hear you speak to him. And that's why God made a promise to Abraham. He made that promise. And when he made that promise, it looked like Abraham listened and follow up immediately. Verse 1, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country. When Abraham was sleeping, or when he was playing, or when he was not paying attention, he would not have heard this word. 
get out of your country and from your kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. Get out. Then what follows? What follows? A response. Abraham did what? Responded. Abraham responded. But was it immediately? He has to sit down and, you know, look into the world. Is this the voice of God or voice of man? I remember a case of Samuel. When God was talking to Samuel, Samuel himself was doubting. But he had a voice. Never knew that that is the voice of God. But thanks be to God that he was able to hear or hear the word. And when he heard the word, what did he do? He went to his uh, 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 master. We call him uh, uh, King Elia, Eli. He went to him. You call me. Which means he has a listening ear. Praise God. That is the Genesis. You have to dialogue with God. You stand between God and man. That's what prayer does. Talking to God and God will talk to you back. Especially to his covenant partners. Verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And that shall be a blessing. This is the word of God to who? To who? To Abraham. Perhaps God may have been speaking to you and you don't know. Maybe you are going to be the most powerful evangelist of this time. But because you are not listening. Maybe you are going to be the most powerful prophet of this time. Because you have not heard. Say, how can God do it? God, oh, leave me alone, God. Let me push my dollar. Because you have not been able to listen when God is talking to you. God spoke to Abraham, and Abraham had. You are going to be blessed and be great, and you become a blessing. Verse 3. Verse 3. And I will bless them. Did you see that place? I will bless them. Who? The people he had a contact with. Any nation, any race, whether you are white, whether you are green, I will bless them. Look at it. That bless thee. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. It's a commission. But if Abraham did not hear, he would not have heard this. Through Abraham family tree, Jesus himself, look at it, came from. He was born. Why? To save humanity. To make sure that life has meaning. Through Abraham lineage. Praise God. Abraham God used him to bless the world. But what are we talking about? Dialoguing with God. Abraham had his own way of praying to God. And God had his own way of approach to Abraham. The same applies to you, you, me, and you. If we are not careful, if we are not careful, but that will not be our portion. So that we will not miss the greatest opportunity that God will give to us. Like I keep saying, Katin Kuma has come and gone. Am I correct? Praise God. 
at Benson, Benson Dahosa has come and did what? And gone. Now begin to mention them, my friend tell us one has come and gone. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, Kenneth Hagin, do you want to tell me other men of God are not coming up? They are coming up. Will you like to be one of them? Will you get the message when you are not listening? You will not get the message. Don't wait until somebody tell you uh, God say you are. Because on, along the line, you'll be doubting. Are you sure God say? But when you hard by yourself, you'll be forced to do anything for God. Praise God. You'll be forced to do what? Anything for God. I, I could remember when the message of this commission came. I have no bearing. But I said, okay, this small boys quarter, I think I better sell it. <laughs> yes, I better sell it. Who am I that God will assign message to? But fortunately, God looked at it and said, no, you won't sell it. But you build on it too. I am sending you. I am the one who is going to finance you. Yes, and God financed it. How he financed it, I don't know. We never thought of coming to America. Yes. All along, I was saying, no, I will stay with winners. To walk under that winners. Under the ball. All along. I never think of going anywhere. She be God, now you talk. Okay, I'll be there. But God, on his own way, thinking differently, planning good for his children. That's what I'm telling you today. That when you are praying, try to listen. Many of you will catch your vision. When you catch your vision, run with it. There are places you will enter. When you enter into that place, God will cause you, you know, to fly higher than every other person. I never thought of opening a church. I never put it in my, in my agenda in life. I remember 1982, a man of God told me, oh, after discussing the revelation, he said, go and open a church. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not a Christian to that. I can only go to church. He said, no, when am I alive? Go and open a church in my presence. I said, no. Praise God. But when the time comes, what happened? Because it's in God's own agenda. I want you to pray. When you are praying, try to be closer to God. Personal relationship is very, very important. Nobody serve anybody. Nobody serve anybody. And nobody can bless you like God will do. Nobody on earth will bless you like God will do. If I give you today, and tomorrow I don't give you, I become a bad person. But when God opens your chapter, place you where you belong, let me tell you, the highest height is where they will be seeing you. You won't go down. You never go down. Praise God. I will bless them that bless you. And anyone that curse you will be cursed. In you, all the families of the earth shall be what? Blessed. Shall be blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, the whole family of the earth shall be blessed. Jesus himself was born to save humanity. And through Christ, people can have personal relationship with God and be blessed. Through Christ. Personal relationship. I, I, so many people go to church, they are not born again. So many people. You see crowds in the church. Plenty of people in the church. They are not broken. They have no formal foundation. Formal foundation. Oh, that I am part and parcel of this place. That's why you see when things are falling in the church, they don't even care. They don't care. Why will they, why will they bother? 
Because it does not concern them. They are just there to dance, uh, make meet up with friends, do connection, and that's all. But that's not what God is saying. You get it from the book of uh, what is that James? Can we look at the book of James? Because I'm only just trying to. Because we, well, whatever we are doing, we do it for our personal use. That's why a lot of problems always come. James chapter number 4 and verse 1. Yes. James chapter number 4 verse 1. Are we there? The Bible says, where the war and fight comes from among you? Where the war and fighting come from among you? Do they not come from your desire for pleasure? Are we there? Mm. The war in your members you lost and do not have. Are we there? You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet, you do not have because you do not ask. <laughs> Verse 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask what? Amiss, that you may spend it in your own pleasure. And these are the problems believers have. That's why I was going. You ask what may not be obtainable. You ask what is not necessary. You ask what is not in life with what God is saying concerning your life. And this is why when you are praying, you pray in line with the word of God. What vision do you have that you are praying on? God give me, God give me. That is not the best. That is what you have for me. What do you, what do you have in stock for me? God has something for me. He has something for you. He has something for every one of us. And that thing is what you want God to put in your mind. Praise God. I said praise God. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. You are not asking what is expected of you. Yes, you ask what? Amiss. Mm. You ask amiss. You ask according to what, how you feel. But that is not in line with what God is saying concerning your life. If it is in line with what God is saying concerning your life, God will hack in to your voice. God will hack in to your voice. Instead of you submitting to God, you are telling God, this is what I want. First and foremost, submit yourself to God and allow God to do what? To guide you into doing what he wants you to do. Then you become who he wants you to be. Hallelujah. If you cannot submit yourself, you will not be who God wants you to be. Once you submit yourself, Unto God, he will help you. He will help you become who he wants you to be. And all the problems will be eliminated. Praise God. You ask and do not receive because you ask and means that you may spend it on your pleasure. Mm, that is the truth. Praise God. We want badly enough to fulfill this our desire. We fight in order to do so. Instead of 
uh, instead of what aggressively, aggressively submitting ourselves to God by asking Him to help us in most of our ways. We cannot. We cannot do that. But we want God. God, God. Yes. Pray, praise God. The problem, or we call it common problem, that many Christians used to have. Hallelujah. Many of us, common problem. We are not asking in faith. Not asking. Asking for wrong reason too. Three, asking wrong thing. Yes. God gave us good gift that he want us to enjoy. But we are not asking right. We Christians do not ask. Sometimes they ask wrong thing. Sometimes they ask for wrong reason. Why? That man, if I get this thing now, I'm going to show him the best car I'm riding. I'm going to show him that it's not only him that can build a house. Wrong reason. Oh, they started church. Okay, me, I'm going to start. Is it not the same Bible school? <laughs> you go up, you do what? You go down. That money you spend, you spend it, even your time. Care is not taking you, go for it. There are grace. In your Christian journey, there's a grace. There's a grace. Don't do it because others are doing it. Did, did. Let me tell you. If somebody is, has a, a genuine call and you find out, and God says, follow that place, you may be the pillar of that place. You may be the pillar of that place. You are not doing it for the man that God used to start. The day God will call you back for a reward, it's not going to take your reward to the founder. It's going to bless you according to your work. There's no need fighting, oh, because, oh, because, I, you started me, I want to start. If you start, you start now. <laughs> if you have grace, grace cover you. But if you don't have grace, you pay a price. You pay a price. I don't see that happening to people. Many people force themselves into doing the work. They force themselves into planting. After all, I know better than that man. After all, I'm well learned. After all, I have the money. Go ahead. When you get a place when God did not send you, you can see it here. Look at that James chapter 4 verse 3. Look at it very well. If you look at that particular verse, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. Now, if you look at it, there's the most common problem that believers have common problem. We said now we want to do twenty seven days of twenty how many days? Twenty seven days of fasting and prayer. Twenty seven days. Twenty seven days. Supposed to be twenty one days, but let's round it up so that we end up with what our vigil, so that you know you understand. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You pray that prayer with faith, you will see God manifesting. It's not God, give me money. You are not coming there to ask God, give me money. You are laying foundation for the year 2024. I say we have said, welcome to year 2024 first service. Am I correct? <laughs> Today is the first service of the year. Now, we are going to lay foundation from tomorrow so that when we are building, we know what we are building on. We use prayer to lay foundation. You don't go to church without knowing what the church is all about. We are not here to fake anybody. We are not here to entice anybody with, with grammar. No. Pick up the word of God. 
pick it up. And when you pick it up, you begin to see the manifestations of God. Now, if you look at the case of Ezekiah because of time, the case of Ezekiah in the book of Isaiah, hallelujah, chapter number 38. Yes, Isaiah chapter number 38 from verse 1. When you look at that particular scripture, you know what prayer stands for. You know Hezekiah was specific. Hezekiah was specific. He did not just pray, oh God, why now? Why, why, why did you want you know, upon the whole thing I am doing? Mm -mm. He, tell him to check my record. Check my record. He was specific. If he was not doing good, he would not ask for his record. What will be your record when God will come to you? What will be your record? Your record that, oh, when service is supposed to start by 10 o'clock, that you are there at uh, uh, 11 o'clock or 10.30. Is that what going to be your, your, your report? Oh, we have to do evangelism for one hour. Now, remain 20 minutes, you join them. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. See, God is taking note of my journey myself. I don't know. But I think he's taking note of your journey as well. Praise God. God will never allow you to die hungry. Verse 1 of Isaiah chapter number 38, verse 1, the Bible said, In those days Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord. Set your house in order. Did he hear? He had. For you shall do what? Die and not live. <laughs> Verse 2. Did you see that place? Then Ezekiah did what? He had the word. That's where I'm going. Ezekiah had the word of the Lord through a prophet. Never said, come on, get out there. He don't start. No. He believed the word, the word of God that was sent to him was real. Now, verse 2, the Bible, can we read that place together? I want to go. Then, then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the, the Lord. Lord. He turned his face. This is where we are. This is exactly what it should be. He turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord. Verse 3, go ahead. And said, remember now, O oh Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. Wow. Did you see that place? What did Ezekiah do? Talk to, talk to me. He wept. He reminded God of his service. Can you remind God of your service? Mm -hmm. When he will come? I pray God will channel your ways and make you a channel of blessing to others. Amen. You will not just be in church for nothing. He wept. He wept bitterly. Ah. And verse 4, what did the Bible say in verse 4? Because of time. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying again, Go. Go and tell Hezekiah, thus says the Lord. Did, did, did Isaiah had God talking to him? Did Isaiah saw God? He only heard his voice. Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord. And he say, here I am, send me. Now, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely. Everybody says, surely. surely. Did you see that, please? I will add 
to your days. 15, how many? 15 yes. years. Not one week. Not two months. Not one month. Not one year. 15 whole years. Praise God. Yeah. This is how far God can go with anyone that is faithful. When they set trap for you, that's the time you will cry to God. That's the time you will cry to God and without, without looking back, before you know it, God will answer you and exonerate you from the punishment of the wicked ones. Hallelujah. That is the time you will cry to God. You see, you don't talk to God that, you know, like oh, whether God will do himself. No, 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 no. If you are faithful, I want to, be, to, to make you understand. If you are faithful, when they set trap for you to punish you, ah, God, why this trap? Who must have done this? What did I do? And God will check your record. You didn't do anything. The person that said the trap will do what? Will fall into the trap. Yes. And this is exactly what happened between God, uh, Isaiah, and Ezekiah. This is exactly what happened. Oh, it's time for you to die. Go and tell him. Set up his family. They, they, can God tell everybody like that? He might, may have told somebody, but the person did not hear. So he cannot complain to God. He has no good record. Tidy your house. It's your time to go. Praise God. Hallelujah. And along the line, they don't have any bearing with God. The chapter closed. You don't even remember. You don't even know what God is saying. But this man took note. I said, God, <laughs> remember how far I have been dealing with you. I've worked with you with a loyal heart all the days of my life. Nothing missing in my, in my hand. Verse, okay, let's see verse 6. Verse 6. Hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I and I will defend this city. This is God speaking to who? To Hezekiah. He will deliver him. He will set the city where he, go, where he governs, where he rules. He will do what? Deliver them. He will protect them. If that 15 years that remain, there will be no war. No one will invade his territory. Why? Because God's hand is upon his life. Praise God. Remember, he was ill, extremely ill. Now, when he's ill, there's nothing. All, many people may be saying that time, oh, he would soon die. Oh, he would soon die. But because he cried to God, and he was faithful to God, and he prayed. I don't know how many of us we pray when we get problems. Is there anybody? And you remind God your work. Eh? Uh -huh. When they set up to punish you for what you do not know, that master will come and fight your battle. But before then, before then, what will be your position with God? You must be faithful. Oh. If you are not faithful, pray. You are just praying, making noise, like empty drum. Like the book of James, they ask. Ah, God, I need money. God, I need to buy a car. God. So that's why you are begging money? That you are a beggar. God, truly, when God gives you that, that job, the next thing is to go and buy a car. You will not know the, 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 the needful, but to buy a car. And when you buy that car, that car is not going to last. It's not going to do any good. Praise God. But if you are a follower of Jesus, can we rush to read verse 19, 16 before the time? Because I'm looking at the time here. Praise God. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, I know for sure 
that if he had decided to do to do what to bless you, he'd be speaking to your hearing. He'd be speaking to your hearing. And you will see it, and God will keep on manifesting his work on your behalf. He's the one that is going to move you to his direction, not you moving God to, to your direction. Because many, many a time, what we are suffering is that we do not want God to lead us. We want to package our ways and say, God, come and bless it for us. That is exactly what is happening. That's why believers are going through so many stops. I will see your unbelievers having more than believers. It's a disgrace. It's a shame. Verse 16. O oh Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So you will restore me and make me live. Verse 17. Indeed, it was for my own grace, uh, for my own peace, that I had great bitterness. But you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption. For you have cast all my sin behind your back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Isaiah, um, Isaiah speaking. Praise God. He realized that his prayer brought him forgiveness and deliverance. He realized it. I, I, I never tell you Ezekiah was never a sinner, but he was a product of faithfulness. Because if, if he was not, he would not have reminded God, God, remember. Praise God. Hallelujah. So his prayer brings what? Forgiveness and deliverance. The next time you have difficult struggling, pray for God's help. You have difficult struggling, struggling, and struggling. Do what? Pray to God for what? For help. And God will do what? Will help you. Amen. I believe every one of us understand what I said. That is what the word of God said, not me said. That is what the word of God said, not me said. Praise God. And once we can pray to God, and again and again and again. God himself is ready to manifest his work on our behalf. I pray that understanding will come to us. And we walk according to his will. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. You can get more at youtube.com forward slash reality meeting. You can also join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. and every Thursday at 7 p.m for another glorious session online or on site.